Okay, guys. Uh, so basically, I just got this new device. Um, it should help with the audio. Um, welcome. I appreciate you taking the time to check out my channel. Um, so basically, you know, it's just like what you know the topic is. It's Dave Ramsey's baby steps, and there's seven of them. And I'll just get straight to the point. But um, I do ask to leave um, leave uh, some feedback and just tell me what you think. Um, tell me what you think of the content and whatnot, and that way you can always improve on it, so I appreciate it. So there are seven baby steps, and again, we'll just get straight to the point. So with the first one, you're looking at baby step one, which is save $1,000 for your starter emergency fund. Now, in this first step, your goal is to save $1,000 as fast as you can. Your emergency fund will cover those unexpected life events you can't plan for, and there are plenty of them. Right, so you don't want to dig deeper, right? Just collect more and more debt. And so, with this first step for me, you know, I'm all about it. I think that's really smart. Things in life are going to happen, it's inevitable. And so, by using that first baby step and by having that, you know, emergency fund, uh, it keeps you from getting more into debt. That way, you can, you know, eventually get further ahead. So, Again, that's it's something that I would look into. I think it's really, really smart because, you know, even if you're doing everything right, I mean, it's it's still going to happen. Something's going to happen. Your tire's going to pop, which, you know, there's nothing you can do about that, right? And so you might need a couple hundred dollars to pay for that and then keep on rolling, literally. So um, I would look into it. Uh, that's something that I definitely agree with. So we'll continue to go from there. Now you got baby step two, right? So that's going to pay off all debt except the house using the debt snowball, right? And so in, in baby step two, it's time to pay off all the cars, your credit cards, and your student loans, right? So start by listing all of your debt except for your mortgage. Put them in, in order by balance from smallest to largest regardless of interest rate, right? And so this is called the snowball effect and you'll use it to knock out your debts one by one. Now, a lot of people do look at the interest rate and so even if you have the smallest debt and it has the highest interest rate, then you're like, well, why wouldn't I tackle, you know, whichever one that has the smallest interest rate? Which, you know, it does make sense, um, but I will say it's easier mentally if you have less things you have to tackle right less things you have to pay off and so actually by doing the smaller step and then working your way to the bigger one mentally it's a lot easier than you think especially mentally and emotionally now the one thing i don't agree with is he says to not you know um put money into your 401k when you're doing when you're trying to pay off your debt and that's something I personally don't agree with because if your company is matching you with two three six ten twelve percent um, then I would totally do it because it is your future and at the end of the day you know you do want to retire and your company is giving you free money so there's no way in the world I personally am going to throw that money away I mean someone's literally handing it out to you I'm gonna be all over all over it so now, with baby step three, right, that's going to be three to six months of expenses and fully funded emergency fund. So you've paid off your debt, right, so you don't want to slow down. Take that money you were throwing at your debt and then turn around basically and fully fund your emergency, which is going to be three to six months, right? This will protect you against life's bigger surprises, right? And that's going to be what? The biggest thing that's going to happen, you know, most of the time it's going to be losing your job. So I'm on board with three to six months. I would lean towards more the six than the three. Um, it does keep you from being able to buy other things and you're still in that, you know, go, 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 um, you know, uh, mood day to day. But again, you know, things are going to happen. And if you want to, you know, create that future that will make it a lot easier for you, having that three to six months is a huge benefit again mentally and emotionally so that's something I personally would do and look into and I totally agree with it so that's that's that for baby step three now for baby step four that's going to be invest 15% of your household household 
income in retirement, right? So it's time to get a little bit serious more about retirement, no matter what your age is. So take 15% of your gross house, household income and start investing it into your retirement. So that's with your 401k, your Roth IRA, right, which is your individual retirement account. Most people that I know personally use Fidelity. Um, but 15% of your household, if you do those calculations over a span of 10, 20, 30 years, you're going to get enough amount of uh, money to be able to live off the rest of your life and just live off of dividends and, and whatnot. So I totally agree with investing with 15%. Um, so that's something I would look into. And if it, and if it takes you a while to get there, um, work your way up. You don't have to start at 15%, even after you've paid off your all your debt other than your house. I mean, you can go to 3 to 6 to 10 to 12 to 15, you know, as long as you're at least every year, at least bumping it up 1%, I think you'll be fine. Now, the next step is going to be save for your children's college fund, right? So you've paid off all your debts except the house and started saving for the retirement. Next is to save for your children's college expenses. So that's going to be your 529 or your ESA, which is education saving account. Now, you can do that which I don't think is a bad idea. But, you know, uh, not everybody wants to go to college and not everybody has to go to college to be successful, right? And so the way, you know, the way these funds work is, for example, with the 529, if you put money in there and when your kid is ready to graduate call or graduate high school, whatever scholarships that they get, you can actually take that money out and keep without getting a penalty but if you take any money out that's not towards the school scholarships to help pay for your kids school then you're gonna get uh, basically a penalty and so it just depends on how much you take out is how much they're gonna take out so that's something to think about um, personally you can always you know put money into you know these blue chip stocks right these large companies like, for example, Coca-Cola or Pepsi, who's always going to be around and just collect their dividends four times a year as and at the same time, that stock will continue to increase, right? So you can start by doing $100 a month and just kind of gradually go up. So that, that that's going to be uh, step six for you. Now with step six, this is pretty crazy. But basically what you want to do is pay off your home, right? Your mortgage is the only thing between you and complete freedom from debt, right? So any extra money you can put towards your mortgage could save you tens or even hundreds of thousands in interest. Now this is completely true. If you go online and you try to, you click on one of the links that uh, allows you to put however much your mortgage costs, and figure out what your interest is and the time that you think you're going to pay it off, you wouldn't believe how much you're just giving money away. So if you can pay that off, that would be amazing. Not easy to do. Uh, mentally, it's on a different level, but it is doable. I mean, if you listen to Dave Ramsey's app and go to Dave Ramsey or his website, you're going to see that there are thousands of people that have done it, and it has changed their life. And it actually has made... Um, most of the time couples grow closer together. It's pretty un unbelievable. So if you can do that, you're, I mean, you're almost, I mean, I mean, you are pretty set. You can pretty much do whatever you want. So there's that for baby six, baby step six. And now you have baby step seven, which is going to be build wealth and give, right? So you know what people with no debt can do anything they want, right? So the last step is the most fun, leave an inheritance for your kids and also give money to people that you know have gone through some hard times that you know uh, might need it or just um, you know just a little bit of money for certain charities that you believe in and stuff like that so I'm pretty big on baby step seven that's a huge accomplishment and something really big um, so that's something I personally am striving to do I'm still personally on baby step two myself but I'm getting pretty close. I just paid off uh, my student loans, so I'm pretty excited about that. Uh, I've got my car, two cars left, and then that's it. And then, and then it's tack trying to uh, do the three to six months, and you know, 
working my way up through the baby steps. But that's my feedback, guys. You tell me what you think, and uh, we'll go from there. Thanks.